Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created to the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. That's a figment of your imagination. Randy Roach Show. Turn up your Okay, so uh, here's an update for you. The House Judiciary Committee just voted to hold Bill Barr in contempt of Congress. Uh, the vote was 24 to 19, I think. Uh, 16. 24 to 16. Uh, and uh, Gerald Nadler is uh, standing in front of the microphones right now saying that we are now in a constitutional crisis. Why? Well, because now that we, uh, it'll go to the, whole, the full floor, uh, and I don't know when, but now that we understand that the House is willing to use its powers and hold the Attorney General in contempt for defying subpoenas one after another, uh, subpoena, this one didn't even uh, take into account his failure to appear. This was all about the unredacted Mueller report, which Bill Barr uh, has been too cute by half. Okay, here's what Bill Barr's accommodation. Now, I told you, just like if you ever went to divorce court, or if you've ever been uh, in a business, uh, you know, situation that you had to go to court for, what does the court tell you? Well, the court will say, before you waste all of our precious court time, can't you two people sit down and have a meeting of the minds? Can't you two people negotiate an accommodation? Can't you find a way? Can't you, uh, you know, use a mediator or a negotiator? And can't you just find uh, something that pleases both sides? and not waste the court's time. All right. So Bill Barr, uh, you know, has uh, offered as an accommodation, and this is bizarre, that the, and and this has been the case, okay, it's not new, that the unredacted Mueller report resides in a secure location. Twelve Congress members have been designated as people who can go and look at it. Now, this thing's 448 pages, unredacted, right? So they can go and look at it, but they can't take notes. Oh, yeah. They can't. Can you imagine if I couldn't take notes? I mean, just look at this mess I have every day. It's organized chaos, but it's my chaos, and I organized it. But can you imagine having to go through 448 pages of anything and not be able to take notes? Uh, They can't discuss it with anybody else that's not cleared to see it. Right. So there's no telling your other members what you saw in the unredacted report and they can't, uh, you know, take uh, photos or or anything, anything at all. That was his account. And that's the way it's uh, it's been all this time. And, And they're saying, no, that doesn't help us to do oversight. How do we do oversight if we can't discuss it among amongst our colleagues to figure out where the law is lacking? Or what legislative uh, corrections need to be made, you know, so that uh, the uh, a foreign government can't campaign with the knowledge of a presidential candidate and that presidential candidate asking for more help from that foreign entity. What legislative action do we have to take to protect us ourselves in 2020? Well, they won't let them do it. They won't let them do anything with that report. So that was the accommodation. So... Uh, obviously, they have just voted that Bill Barr needs to be held in contempt, and the president obviously can pardon him. Constitutional crisis. What does that mean? It means the framers never foresaw such a criminal being a president. The framers never foresaw this problem. They never Uh, foresaw that this would be an impasse in the uh, administration of justice. They just did. But a president who refuses to respond to congressional oversight is taking the presidency to a new level of danger for the rule of law. He is saying there is no constitution that applies to me. There are no rules. There are no laws. Whatever law I choose to break, I can pardon anybody for helping me do it, or I can pardon myself. That is the position of this president. 
Now, I brought up John Yu. John Yu is now a law professor at the University of California in Berkeley, of all places. And John Yu is the guy who wrote the torture memos, who gave W advice and consent to torture people in violation of the Geneva Conventions by saying, oh, you're a unitary executive. You don't have to answer to the Geneva Conventions. You don't have an answer to Congress. You don't have to, you know, uh, tell anybody anything. You could just do. And then seven low ranking reservists ended up in Leavenworth paying the ultimate price after we saw the photographic evidence of what was going on in an Iraqi prison called Abu Ghraib. This is why I got sued, because I saw that. And I knew who was doing it. And in the end, when I finally got my day in court, like three to four years later, because it's not speedy justice, the court found that I had told the truth and that this defense contractor with billions of dollars that was suing me was not telling the truth about their involvement in torture. And they appealed it. And I went to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, the most conservative circuit courts there are. And they and they found that I told the truth. But John Yu is 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 my adversary in this matter. Okay, and John Yu actually said that Donald Trump's approach to the Constitution is novel and dangerous. He said the thing that's unusual is the blanket refusal. It's extraordinary if the president actually were to try to stop all congressional testimony and any subpoena issued. That would actually be unprecedented. He's treating Congress like they're a local labor union or a Chinese uh, company working on a Trump building. The framers of the Constitution did not anticipate this exact issue. They did not address it. The Constitution allows for Congress to do oversight, and the Supreme Court has said that it is inherent in the responsibilities of Congress via the Constitution uh, that the legislative branch and the executive branch uh, you know, have to cooperate with each other. And they said Congress must be able to obtain information to help it perform its responsibility of oversight. But the executive branch cannot function without some ability to invoke executive privilege. But this is putting the toothpaste back in the tube, this claim that he's making. Here, let, let Hakeem Jeffries explain it to you because he did a beautiful job of it in less than a minute. Then you want to assert executive privilege. Are you kidding me? Really? You can't assert executive privilege after the fact. Right. When the closest advisors to the president have already spoken to Team Mueller. Wait a second. Let's try to go through this. White House counsel Don McCann. Talk to Mueller. For 30 hours. There is no assertion of executive privilege. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders talked to Mueller. No assertion of executive privilege. White House Communications Director Hope Hicks talked to Mueller. There was no assertion of executive privilege. It's a phony argument. The House is a separate and co-equal branch of government. We're not a wholly owned subsidiary of the Trump administration. We don't work for Donald Trump. We work for the American people. We have a constitutional responsibility to serve as a check and balance on an out of control executive branch. The attorney general is totally out of control. He will be held in contempt of Congress. I yield back. You should have just added the word today because he was held in contempt of Congress today. But here's the thing. I mean, uh, the president is fighting all subpoenas. The pre- you, you have uh, law professors all over this country. You have prosecutors all over this country. Conservative law professors like a John Yu. Uh, you, the, 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 uh, Alan Sklansky is a law professor at Stanford. He said the nation is moving from minor scuffles that give rise to contempt citations against officials in the Bush and Obama administrations to a dangerous place, a dangerous standard. He said, quote, there's something different about saying across the board that we're not going to comply with subpoenas sent to us by a House of Congress 
controlled by Democrats because they're the enemy. And we're just not going to do it. Our system depends on some commitment by all public officials to continue constitutional order. He said a constitutional crisis is not a cliff that you fall off of and then suddenly you're in it. He said it's like the slope, how far down the slope you are. We're pretty far down the slope. We are now, obviously, and I've, we've been in a constitutional crisis for a while now, meaning there is no solve in the Constitution. We're at an impasse. And what the courts have to say about this is going to be everything. It's going to determine whether we are establishing an authoritarian regime, totalitarian status, or if we can keep the republic that the founders gave us. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.